In this episode of Collective Learning, I'll be taking one of my students' sketches and turning it into a fully rendered concept. This is going to be unedited and directly recorded from my classroom. Once again, thank you for tuning to my channel. Please like and subscribe. All right, so basically what today's demo is going to be about is I'm going to take this sketch, which I think design-wise is great, has a lot of information going on, has a nice balance and complexity to it. And we're going to render it to the point where it's going to be a finished character concept art that's suitable for a AAA game or a live-action film. What I've gone to do just now was actually to get all of the early texture work done. So I have references for cloth, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the thought process of how you get references for photo bashing and actually using it for artwork. Because there is one kind of referencing which is for inspiration and design, and there's another kind of referencing where it's purely as source materials to pull from. So you'll see a lot of these kind of like grayscale 3D renders. And these are ZBrush renders or 3D renders that have a lot of cloth information but no color information. And this is actually more useful for me as a photo bash texture because I can change the colors and manipulate it accordingly. So these are all going to be very useful for my photo bashing process later. I also have some very clean photo textures uh, for the ones that I couldn't find 3D renders of. So I tried to get every part of the costume uh, ready in terms of the amounts of references, but I think it's going to be like a 20% I need to add on my own, which is fine. So I even have references of like the hands, so I'm going to use this hand for this hand, and I'm going to use this hand for this hand. So even the, the arm anatomy references are there. So when you look for pictures like this, try to find ones which are either have very to no lighting, very little to no lighting, it'll be easier for you to work. And the reason why I like to use 3D renders more so than photo renders or photographs, because with 3D renders, the resolution is much clearer and everything is just kind of flat. Pure detail, pure material, which is great for texture bashing. If you do have to use a photograph, try to get one where it's a photograph in a studio lighting environment. So this will be a photograph in a studio lighting that's very clean, very sharp. There's a lot of textures for us to work with. So in my setting for the Google Images, everything is just set to large images only for the most part. So I have cloth. I have also for the portrait, Rida Daisuke. So I'm kind of very likely mix a few of his faces to kind of form my own design for here with the base. And I will be also using Sketchfab elements for that. To get a much more secure 3D form, especially with the shadow cast and everything for him. So we'll see if we can find like a good stock. Uh, if we can't find one for an Asian guy, uh, I might just use like a novel. Uh, maybe a Caucasian head. There's probably a higher chance of getting a Caucasian head. And then just matching the lighting reference for that. So I can probably use that as a base as well. So because my goal is to produce something that's a little bit more photorealistic, so I'm going to skip all of the game or stylized looking heads and just kind of keep to just real human scans or real human references. Well, this has animation. It's just the eye shaders working. So, because in Sketchfab you can actually adjust the lighting. 
so it's going to be quite useful for us to hold on to this. I might want to just get the screenshot now because the this model is very very heavy on this PC. So just try to match the camera angle as best as we can. Unfortunately, we can't really adjust the focal length in this browser. So we're going to just use whatever we have here. So give or take, this is a similar angle, similar lighting scenario. I'm just going to print screen this. It's still like the best way to save Sketchfab screenshots. Maybe one day they'll add like a screenshot feature. That'll be awesome. There is actually also a little tabs on the side um, that you can test out and see whether there's any possibility to grab more textures or more screenshots. Let's check the matcap plus surface. Probably not. Hey, old man. The albedo is quite nice. So albedo is just no lighting, pure color information. So I might save this. So I like to start like this, clean, you know, pre-prepare all of my textures that I need. I, I treat it like almost like if you want to cook something where you just prepare all the ingredients ahead of time. You don't really want to search for something while you're doing it. It slows down the process quite a bit. And I'll just do my best to get all that I can think of. So now that we have um, a good amount of textures, we can actually start creating the artwork. So I'm going to duplicate this into a new canvas. And I'm not too sure about the performance of this PC. So I might keep my image quite small in size. It's 2K by 1K because we'll be using a lot of photo textures and things like that. So just to avoid any lag time, I'm going to keep it small. But ideally, when we're going to final concept like this, I'll scale it up to 6K tall, at least 6,000 pixels at least. And that, that will be very good for the resolution wise. So we're going to keep this sketch and the line drawing is very clean. So I'm mainly going to use lasso and photo bashing for this uh, this initial stage. I'm not going to make any changes to the gesture with exception of this hand and this hand because I think the hand is not gripping the star and this hand's a little bit off position as well. Okay, but we should be good to start. So I like to just maybe start off with the general costume. So let's maybe sort out the pants first. This is a very big part of his outfit. So I'm going to grab some of the pants textures that we found earlier. So whenever I create a concept, I like to break it down to stages. The first stage obviously is to create this sketch. So all of the priority will be design, storytelling, 
But since now that the design is locked, I'm going to move on to the second stage, which is purely about texture and material. Right? I, I don't really want to think about design at the moment. All my focus is on how do I make this drawing look like a realistic piece of material. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a little bit of texture cleanup here. That's just a stamp tool. Um, it's not really necessary, but again, I, I like to keep my textures and files clean. One second, sort this out. Touch ring, switch off. It's just a personal preference of mine to not have it. Once again, these textures are quite nice and big, so we have a lot to work with. So there is a little bit of lighting information in this photo, but not to the point where it's so harsh that I need to be worried about it. So it's quite a good photo because of that. So now that I have the texture in place, I can use uh, the transform tools to just warp the texture so that it lines up with the silhouette, the design of my initial sketch. This is also why uh, you want to start with a fairly high resolution texture because all of this warping will actually make the texture more pixelated the more you work with it. So having a high-res texture to start with will allow that wiggle room. The texture will still survive resolution-wise. So besides warping, I also going to use the liquify tool. Just to make sure some of these perspective and just the way that it's wrapping around the body feels natural. What I notice about people who just started photo bashing, maybe they, they fail to really take into account the changes in perspective of the textures, the camera angle, that your photo bashing ends up looking really flat. And also I want to make sure that I honor the original sketch as much as I can but any place that I can add more realism, I'm just going to do that. So this texture has been integrated quite okay. I'm not thinking about color yet. I'm not thinking about um, yeah, I'm not thinking about color yet, just pure perspective, material choice, and getting all the wrinkles to look correct. So we're going to move on to the next part. So I noticed that there is actually an additional cloth in front there, like a loin cloth. So let's see whether there's any texture that we could grab. Let's try with either one of these. I don't have an exact cloth, although this one has a pattern, so let me try and use this instead. This is not the actual, it's not a loin cloth, but I think if I cut it just right, it could resemble like a pleated cloth. And 
once again, what I really need to take care is the to ensure that the perspective lines up with the rest of his body. And I kind of like the extra details of the pleat, so I might keep that. And I'm definitely going to make use of this. I do like the this uh, cloth belt. I'm going to add that in. Adjust the perspective a little bit so that we get the curvature. I'm going to flip it to the other side to build up this general cloth form. So this is not the exact final design, nor is it the final color, but at least I have a base of how the cloth belt is going to look like. And sometimes I would go in with a brush and just kind of clean up some of these lines a little bit. but. I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum because the more brushwork I put in, the more I need to clean up and it might look like interlude, which is not the outcome that I'm going for. Just kind of tone down the shadows on this piece. So every texture that I put in, I'm going to neutralize the values by you know just cutting down the heavy shadows and cutting down the heavy highlights. You want a neutral value somewhere in the middle ground. Same with the lower half of the pants here. Let's just neutralize the values so that we get a little bit more values to work with and it's going to be easier to colorize it as well. So no cast shadow yet, no ambient occlusion shadows yet, so that's why it's looking a little bit fake, but it's fine. We will start to think about the lighting in the next phase. So once again, we're going to take it step by step and build up the piece as we go. Okay, next part is going to be this area here. I really like uh, this thing. It's going to be definitely for the inner collar. I'm going to leave that there while I still remember. And now I'm looking for... So, I always will search for two things. The first one, of course, if, if it looks exactly like the same angle and same shape, then it's perfect. But if I can't find it, like in this case, I don't see any particular references having the exact pattern. I might have to cobble something together or just be creative about my textures. Meaning I'll just find an angle of cloth that I think is similar to the shape of my drawing. Let's try with this one, see if we can pull it off. It's going to be a bit of a hit and miss, but let's just test it out. It's not great, it's possible. Let's dig around a little bit more, try another route.
I think this one is a little bit better. I believe I can recreate the wrinkles using a combination of these pictures. So you don't always get lucky and get like the exact photo. You kind of have to, you have to still work for it. The photos are just here mainly to speed up the process of creating this, you know, very realistic wrinkles. But it's not a, you know, it's not a pure cheat code. You still have to do quite a bit of work to make it look nice. So we're just building up more structure, trying to make sure that everything lines up silhouette-wise. And I want to see if I can improve this wrinkle a little bit more. Let's try and grab this pants part to see if I can use that. Okay, so coming along, I'm not going to spend the whole day here, so let's move on and transition to another part and let our mind rest a bit because um, you don't have to get it that perfect the first try. Uh, let's move around and flesh everything else up first. So I'm going to see if I can use this as a base to start building up the sleeves. I like the wrinkles but because of the pose being different, I need to be careful about how much I use of this texture. Probably just going to use a combination of line sketch back on top. We're going to use a combination of uh, this photo a few times and see if I can build this shape. So that part's lining up quite nicely. Then for the other sleeve. So this is why I like to spend quite a bit of time getting all the references first because it just makes this whole process so much more fun. And really relax and 
just kind of, it's almost like playing like a puzzle, trying to get everything to fit together. Wrinkles here are a little bit aggressive for a part that's not supposed to be that wrinkled. So, let me see if I can maybe use a portion of this texture. And just soften up the wrinkles here. looking a little bit more natural and then also maybe improve some of the wrinkle folding here. So I'm using the same photo to build this up just to make my life a little bit easier because if I were to use another picture then I will have to color correct it, adjust a lot of things and very likely the resolution or the pixel density of the photos wouldn't really line up as well. So I'm just using the same photo to build this whole section so that the consistency is there. And when your textures are sufficiently high res, you can actually even just grab small sections and rebuild a bigger section using small parts. Okay, and perhaps for this part of the sleeve, I'm going to use this particular section. It has that nice micro detail on the sleeve there, which I really like. And just clean up this edge here using the brush. So usually my brushwork is just limited to places like this where I just want to tighten up and blend the photo batch elements together. So I notice the wrinkles here are less than satisfactory so let me just tweak that a little bit further maybe see if i can just grab this section i think i like it much cleaner than that especially if i'm following the original sketch the wrinkles aren't that aggressive So everything's looking good so far. Uh, we've managed to block out quite a lot of the, the character within a very short period, which is great. Now I'm just gonna go in and clean up some of this silhouette, make sure like all the parts are like, gelling together.
probably going to put the hands in soon as well so that we have a reference point anatomy wise and once again there's no color i'm not going to use this exact color scheme but i'm just going to leave them there here first because my focus now is just on getting the cloth and all the textures to look right Okay, so let's move on to the other parts of the costume. I really want to make use of this very cool texture. I'm going to use that as the base. I'm going to play around with the layering a bit. Actually, add a, a new dimension of detail on top of the concept art, the original sketch. And again, it's just getting everything to line up correctly with the original drawing and the perspective that we're suggesting. So there is like a, a line that's going across the top here. That's part of the original design. And let's see if I can just use this texture to simulate that. We have some armor pieces on top as well that will help blend everything together. So I'm not going to be too concerned about trying to get everything to line up just yet. Something that will make my life a little bit easier is just to uh, color correct this thing right now to match with the blue. I'll just make the blending of these two textures a little bit easier. So later we can actually just merge all of the blue elements together and then color correct them as uh, one texture. Cover this up. So that so that everything kind of becomes a little bit more consistent. And let's start to block out the chest armor so there's a lot of layering going on so I am taking some small artistic liberties at the moment you know I'm like mixing it up just a little bit but um, of course I'm gonna do my best to honor the original design uh, but definitely for the armor I couldn't find the exact reference or the exact design so I'm very likely gonna cobble something together based on like 3d renders like this so the shape is quite particular, this is kind of this particular silhouette. 
Um, there are many ways you can do it. One of them was just kind of like bring back that actual lasso selection and try to like see if there are any parts line up. But in this case, uh, I don't think that will work well. So what I'm going to do is just cut out this entire chest piece with the tassels included, connections included. Just bring it over here and see how I could use a section of it. And all I really need to do is just make sure the silhouette generally lines up with the rest of my design. So I want to make sure that it really looks like it's wrapping around his under his body underneath the cloth. So I'm just going to use a, this warp tool to make sure that it's kind of nicely sitting on his chest. So even though I won't see this part, I'm still going to do it like just to make sure I have a reference point to his um, anatomy and structure. Next, I'm just going to trim into the surface and just reveal the areas that I need. Basically, this is like the general silhouette of what I need. So. I need to use this as a guide instead. Okay, and then I'm going to rebuild this silhouette and add more detail. So, the way I'm going to do that is let's say I'm looking for this shape. So maybe what I can do is I can grab this piece of detail on the arm just flesh out that detail there now I need a straight line or sort of like a straight line maybe what I'll do is I'll use this two of these dots So purely perspective, purely getting the forms to read correctly. Lighting is still all over the place, but that's normal. I'm gonna fix that later. And then another curved piece for the bottom part. So I am spending a bit of time here. Like this, this area is quite important. So hence the, the added detail. But it's just good to kind of settle this part early so that we don't have to kind of uh, revisit it. I also want to make sure that it's following the original design where this whole section is much more smooth. So I'm going to see if I can just grab this chunk here, that small little piece. just temporarily map that in. Um, I think the resolution is insufficient for that. So let me try with this part see if that works. It's a little bit bigger here. Last resort is I just paint it. Yeah, but this is a little bit better. Uh, it's, it's sitting a little bit nicer on the surface so that's good. And I probably want one more straight line going down to wrap the whole thing up. So I think I'm going to use this edge here and probably this here as well because I think it's nicely tucking into the armpit. So that should just kind of wrap up all armor quite nicely. So it's a little bit of like puzzle work. It's almost like a matte painting where you're trying to build up the forms using a series of images. And now we have like an armor piece that seems to be sitting quite well on his chest. Uh, I'm just going to remove any weird distortions that I think would affect the believability of it. Everything looks like it's wrapping around. And it has some nice micro details that came with the photo. So 
That's good so far. I'm gonna merge everything. There's one nice contained layer. Clean up the silhouette a bit. And let's take this very nice details of the rope attachments. And I'm even gonna grab this entire shoulder mount here. I really like the details there. So we're just gonna connect those elements together. Okay, so we have now like a very nice armor piece is just resting on his chest. So let's proceed with the shoulder armor. Theoretically, I could use this. Um, it is a very nice render, very nice texture. I did also save this image, possibly, but I kind of like the a little bit more simplistic, as this one looks almost very ceremonial. Um, well, let's give it a shot. I mean, let's try both and see which one works better. So I'm not going to grab the whole thing. I'm just only going to grab one, one section of it. And I like this particular reference because I know that the perspective almost lines up pretty well. So that's great. Makes my life very easy. As well. And we don't want to just blindly repeat it, so let's make sure we make small adjustments to the perspective so that everything lines up. And I actually notice like the design is a little bit shorter, the lower half, so I'm just gonna shorten up this whole piece here just by shifting the pixels upwards. So we got like the foundation set quite nicely for this armor piece. So let's try by just reusing this same one. I have a hunch that it might look very repetitive because he has a lot of noise in there. So what I'm gonna do is just manually clean this up, use the stamp tool instead. It's not a perfect tool but it, it does get the job done and Especially for a quick one like this, it works quite well. However, you just have to remember to clean it up after this. So, I like the cascading armor shape, so I'm definitely going to make sure that's present. Uh, but what I need to do is make sure that each of these are overlapping correctly. And that's something that people tend to forget as well. It's small little detail and silhouette. So the cascading armor looks really good. Probably what will make it look much better is uh, a little bit more lighting and shadow. But we'll, we'll sort that out in a later stage. So for now, let's just um, tweak the form a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna flare out the tips so it just looks a little bit more naturalistic, less CG, whereas it just darkly repeated. And of course, we're gonna tweak the colors later. But generally, that's a, that's a pretty nice start. I'm gonna bring back the reference of that samurai, the 3D rendered samurai, and get some of these tassels and rope connections pieces. These are like very lovely, very nicely modeled out. 
very nicely rendered so they'll act as excellent textures. So to be honest, this stage is not difficult as, at all, it's just maybe possibly a little bit tedious to some people. Um, I, I personally enjoy it. I find painting honestly much more tedious, so I actually like this workflow because I can create the design that I want uh, without having to you know, try recreate it, try and learn painting at the same time. At least now I can just focus on detail, focus on design, which is the stuff that excites me more as an artist. Okay, so fairly quickly we have everything in. It's about like maybe 30 to 40 minutes elapsed and we kind of have almost the entire design fleshed out. Let's move on to the portrait and block that out. So I like to use the Sketchfab first um, because, because it has lighting information. So first thing is to make sure that scale-wise everything lines up. Generally, I like to start with an anchor, maybe like the nose. So I just want to make sure like the nose lines up. Of course, like the facial facial features are different because it's two different people. So we're going to use just the, the nose as a landmark to get the general size of the head. Now what we're going to do now is just duplicate this and we'll call this like a head wrap. So what we're going to do is we're going to liquefy this portrait. Show backdrop and use our head wrap as a guide. So first thing is just try to get like the bone structure to line up to a degree. I'm just gonna do this very gently. Uh, I'm not gonna rush it because uh, you, you might get like a very wobbly head if you're not careful. But I'm gonna just make some adjustments that I think will kind of line up their features. And I am also going to use the, the actual actor's reference later to really tie the design together. This is more just as a good start to get everything lining up. So go slowly, make sure all of the, the anatomical landmarks are correct. You don't really want to rush it and to the point where you're creating a disproportionate face. So we can always just keep checking the keep checking on and off the uh, reference so that we know that we're not going too far. And of course, like this is a Caucasian base base, so the definitely there's gonna need some work to soften some of the bone structure, as Asian bone structures are not as defined as a most of the time as a Caucasian bone structure. But this is great because we have the ears given to us, we have the neck and the car shadow. These are all very, very useful elements that we don't have to paint anymore. So now essentially it looks like a white person dressing up as so our character, which is good. You, what I'm more concerned about is making sure that everything lines up 
anatomy-wise and, and perspective-wise. So we're going to start to introduce more of our actual actor reference. Very likely this is for like the uh, more the micro details like the, the eye shape in particular. But I don't want it to be like a simple hack job. I of course want to design my own character as well. So that's why I like to mix a few photos together so that it, it just doesn't look too cheap. What I notice, like people who just do this the first time, they just literally cut out the head and put it on top of the character. There's no actual work done. And to me, that tends to make the whole piece look a little bit cheap. So I think like the best thing, uh, the best way to do it is just make sure you're getting the best of each of the textures that you're using. So for the Sketchfab screenshot, what we got was a very nice base with good lighting. Now we're going to use the photograph because the photograph doesn't have much lighting reference to it. We're just going to use this for all of the, the features and what, what makes this man look attractive. Has a lot of subtleties in the shape of his eyes, the shape of his nose that I want to make sure it gets preserved. Okay, so I'm just building up the layers. Um, we're nowhere close to final yet, but I just like to put you in at the same time. And just see like kind of happy medium like can achieve. So I'm gonna start erasing now. In this case, I'm even going to mess around with the lighting a little bit because I think it affects the overall appearance. So if you're designing something for like a, a video game or a film, there are also times where you are working up like a like your your game director or your film director might already have an actor in mind that they plan to 3D scan. So the workflow is actually pretty similar in the sense that you would have to work off an actor base. So it's, sometimes we do draw like a portrait from scratch, but oftentimes, especially when something is very photorealistic, it's best to just start with the real person as a base. I like where this is going. I'm gonna just uh, apply a little bit of a surface blur just to get rid of the pixelation. And I do notice like the neck is very, very bright, not very dark in this case, very blue for some reason. So I'm just gonna change all of the blue and cyans to a warmer color. So now both images are somewhat integrated, merge them down. And very much like the clothing, we're going to keep it at this stage first and then continue to flesh it out further. So what I'm going to do is just kind of tone down the, the brightness and tone down the saturation. Just once again to neutralize all the values, we'll tighten it up even further. I'm going to add a hat now. I 
I'm not sure. I don't think this is the exact hat that he's supposed to be wearing, but the angle is very close. So what I can do is kind of combine this or modify this texture so that it matches the silhouette of my actual drawing. Combine with this too, so that we get a little bit more variety. Just once again reduce the contrast. reduce the contrast of the lighting so that it's just easier for us to blend the textures together. For the detail on the rope, let me bring back that samurai piece thing has a lot of nice rope details. Use back this one since it's already been selected. Again, not not the most historically accurate thing, but I'm just uh, I'm aiming for efficiency at the moment. And we'll add one more. So of course the there is gravity. I'm just gonna rotate this downwards like that. Small touch, but it just ties the textures together. So we got like a nice space for the head. So moving forward, let's do the rest of the body. But you kind of like, can, you know the drill by now, I think. Uh, I'm just gonna repeat this workflow until the whole artwork is sufficiently fleshed out. So I love I love this scalp by the way, I've used it for like cloth references, cloth textures uh, many times now and, and it's just such an excellent piece. So the hand gesture is also really nice, the sculpting is great, I'm going to use that as a face. It's a little bit too wrinkly for my liking so I am going to do a surface blur. Just to soften the wrinkles up a little bit. I'm gonna adjust the values because um, this is a very heavy grayscale render and I want the skin tone basically to match with this face so let's try and colorize it and see if we can just kind of eyeball matching the values. Another thing we could do is also image adjustments, shadow and highlight and maybe just tone down the amount of shadows, tone down more highlights, see if we can neutralize the picture. Still too pixelated, so a little bit more.
final color I'm just gonna use uh, color blending mode just manually paint in some color picking and just gonna try to try to match the exact hue. So the colors of the shadows are just using the color of the insides of his mouth, eyebrows, the shadow areas so that I get a, a good color pick value for the shadows in between the fingers. So essentially, whatever color shadow is on the face is also the same color shadow on the hand. The idea is like if I do this, then it should look like they're the same material. Let's just bring it back down. Just the position a bit. Thickness a bit. Just paint in anything that's missing. Okay, so that looks fairly reasonable. For a very quick job, I think it's kind of usable for now. And then I love this hand, it's very well done. Of course, another alternative is just taking photo of, of your own hands. I think that's another, it's like super easy. Um, getting the hands to look right most of the time with an exact perspective and exact pose. You won't get lucky often, so it's probably just best to photograph it yourself. So let's just get the position right. It should be a little higher and smaller. We just want like those fingers peeking out. And same thing, let's do a color matching. Okay, this one is a little bit quicker. So again, same thing, set my brush to color mode so that I can just paint in the exact colors. Just very quickly try to flesh out this hand value wise and there's going to be a car shadow coming from the sleeve so I need to take that into account as well so it won't be as bright as the other hand perhaps. so I'm going to use a layer mask for this so that I have a bit of a backup just in case I want to change the position of the hand later At least now I can, I can uh, just move the layer around and see what will be a nice position. I still have my mask intact. So that, that looks pretty good. Add a drop shadow. Even though we're not supposed to really do lighting yet, but I think uh, it's a very quick one and I think will help with deciding on the later stuff. So let's just add a quick drop shadow. We're gonna just increase the contrast just a little bit. Alright, so that's looking good. Only left the pads and some minor details and then the weapon. So I found this really nice uh, samurai shoe reference which I want to use. It's a ZBrush model and it's great because it has multiple angles as well. So what I'm going to do is use this one for the left leg. So 
try to make sure like the angle lines up. And for this one here, because it's we're actually viewing it a little bit more from slightly in the top view. So I'm gonna use the warp tool and just warp this texture so that it lines up. And I think for this part, this is again once again not really accurate, but I think it'll look quite cool. I'm just gonna extend this texture outwards. So if I put it underneath pants. I need to do now is just to rotate this a little bit further outwards and we're gonna move on to the second foot so same thing use this texture instead this angle instead this zebra sculpt So you can imagine that maybe in a, in a working environment, um, especially let's say you're producing sketches for characters, if you work like this, instead of relying purely on a line sketch, you can actually produce a lot more designs that are in color and have texture a little quicker. And that's actually normally how I prefer to create concepts. I would just have a very, very loose sketch but I will use this technique to quickly build up the design as well as the materials and presentation. Then when it comes to the finishing, it's just a matter of how much time my client can give me, how much time there is in the project to tighten everything up with a brush or additional higher res textures. Okay, so this material here, I want to match back closer to this one because I'm going to merge them together. So basically, it's kind of straightforward. It's just a dark gray. And for the shoes, it's a little bit more complicated. It's a mix of a few elements, so I'm going to have to cut everything up. So this is the white socks, or whatever color we choose the socks to be. Cut this out. It's a little bit tedious again, but um, I find this to be the cleanest way to do this. You could then you just paint over it with a brush set to multiply as well, but I just like the, the full control of doing it in the lasso. So I want this to be just clean white, maybe tinted a little bit of like yellow, red, just to hint like some aging or some dirt. And the next thing is the woven, the woven um, parts of the shoe. It's again quite tedious to lasso this up, but it'll be worth it. Um, a lot of artists that I talk to, um, especially if they, they're not comfortable with doing a lot of lasso work, might find it a little bit awkward initially. But what I found out is uh, a little bit of practice should be fine to get the hang of it. Sorry, I just lost control over my keyboard, so it's just a bit annoying now. Let's see if I can get back control. I lost all control of my keyboard for one second.
If any of you have faced this before, let me know. Uh, I don't know what's up. Must be that thing that popped up just now because uh, I literally have like no keyboard input. Always scan this section. Yep, okay. it was the no filter keys. Colorize. So this is going to be kind of like the light yellow material. Start magnifier. Start narrator. Start on screen keyboard. Set up high contrast. And then start the magnifier. Part is just the lower half. So this one, I'm just going to color it narrator. Way. And we'll go for like a dark gray. Start on screen face. keyboard. Set up high contrast. Start magnifier. Okay, so that part's nicely colorized. Has start narrator. Quite some interesting uh, contrast in it. It's the only issue now. I'd say is that start it's maybe on screen clean, keyboard. But that's something we can resolve with a little bit of texture and a little bit of brushwork. Set up my contrast. Okay, last start thing magnifier. I want to sort out is the staff. And then we can start actually tightening, tightening everything up. Start narrator. So this is a really nice piece of 3D artwork. Um, what I really want to start is on just screen keyboard. The gold staff. Uh, probably not going to even match the details. Set up high contrast. You can also just Google up like a. a just a stick, a gold stick as well, for the texture. It doesn't have to be an actual pump. Hide the seam in the hands, that'll be easy. Okay, and all of this here, um, because the shape is quite complicated. You know what? Let me just clean up my file a bit, just kind of get rid of some of these textures that we're not using anymore. The scene is quite heavy as it is. I might be okay so this is like borderline stealing already because I'm actually using the exact part on the surface but so what will be I would say maybe unethical is like if you just leave it like this and then you just kind of flip it to one side I, I think that would be maybe I wouldn't say not that cool to do um, what you should do is at least maybe because what we want is just that material as opposed to the design, uh, I still want to honor my original sketch, but I'm just trying to optimize the way that I'm getting this design out. So 
I will use this uh, 3D model purely just to help out with getting this uh, materials out. I'm not going to grab any of the design aesthetics or design from this artist because that design work is done by the 3D guy or the 3D person. What I want to steal from them is how it looks like gold because the way that the gold here is really nice. So in a sense we could do it like this where we cobble it together. I'm also going to try and mix it from perhaps uh, multiple sources. So we're going to use this part again. This has a very nice curved shape and the resolution is much better as well. I'm going to use this to build up this silhouette and I'm going to keep doing this until the entire design starts to come out. So I'm going to grab this part for the middle. Maybe we can grab this particular section. It's quite a small element here in the middle, but I think it'll look really nice at the top here. So it's like a little puzzle game where we're just kind of selecting interesting shapes that kind of would build up this form. So it's almost like we're creating a sculpture out of different pieces of found objects. Okay, so everything seems to be in place and it matches the silhouette of my original sketch. I'm going to flip it to the other side. So we get a full design and um, I want to merge just make the yellows a little bit desaturated give it something a little bit more photo real again not, not too bright of a gold perspective For the rings though, I am going to just use his rings because uh, these are just a pain in the ass to try to paint them. And it's, it's not much of a design, the ring is a ring. Um, alternatively, I could also use a photo of a golden earring, that also works fine. But since we have this texture in place, we can use that. what it is very low res so I'm just gonna use this instead that should give us a much better resolution. So it really pays off you know, being able to think outside the box in terms of where you get the textures. I would imagine that if you try and search for like monk staff ring, you, know, you probably might not get any usable textures. So understanding how to use Google Images search engine algorithms is very useful as well to speed up your workflow. So theoretically, they should be all dangling at the same angle. So that's what I'm gonna do.
okay, so we can just start to hide our wine art in the back and start to really clean this up silhouette wine. So the texture building phase is almost done. We're gonna soon proceed to a lighting phase and maybe figuring out all the colors and any missing textures. So what I'm doing now is just kind of going with a brush and just kind of merging all of these textures together so that they line up a little better. And that we don't have any weird silhouettes uh, so a weird silhouette would be maybe something like here. This is a kind of an odd silhouette, maybe because it's intersecting the pants. So let's clean that up. Maybe just improve on the overall soft shadows just a tiny bit. Once again, I'm going to be careful to just not overpaint everything. Just keep it neutral. And I think here also has a little bit of oddity. The way that the buffs and the wrinkles are being done. Definitely here as well. So it's much easier to do this at, at the stage now because everything is in place so not too concerned about all the textures and everything like that. Oops. Well, what I'm going to do is maybe just stretch out this guy. Yeah, that would look good. is coming along really well. Level of finish is good as well. Everything has sufficient resolution, a lot of details, and we've only spent about an hour and a half to get to this stage. So all we have to do now is actually just fix the colors and fix the lighting. So before I do that, um, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. on the PSD file. I do want to keep some of the layers present, uh, just key ones. And I don't have to label all of them, but I just want the important ones to be sorted out. And this is technically optional, but it's very good practice, I believe. Um, Especially when you're working professionally and you know that you're going to get feedback from clients and things like that. And you just want to be flexible to make any changes quickly. So a lot of the... everything is merged together and all of the clothing pieces that belong together are close by And 
the other thing is uh, to make it easier I want all the colors that uh, anything that's the same color to be in the same layer so when I adjust the hue I don't have to do it a few times Alright, so let's play with colors now. So, let's say, actually this current color scheme is also pretty interesting, but let's just imagine that we want to tweak it a little further. So I'm just going to use like hue and saturation levels to add some color variety to the whole piece. I'm not going to paint any of the colors in. I'm also going to try and suggest uh, just a little bit more color variety or hue variety by playing with the levels and intensity of the colors itself. So it just it doesn't look too flat. So like here we have like three tones of red even though they're the same fabric. Other thing I'm going to start to apply is just a little bit of ambient occlusion in between the materials. So if you don't know what ambient occlusion is, if you just type it out, it's actually a 3D term. But basically, ambient occlusion is all of the shadows that appear when objects are close to one another. So when you have an object that's here, this box and this wall, there should be an ambient shadow in between them. So it's not cast shadow, but it's ambient shadow. So if you look at ambient occlusion painting, you can see like how people use this to help build up their just their like underlining shadow first before they start doing the cast shadows. And I like to build up my ambient shadows first because it's just a little bit easier to work with. Um, lighting is is something that's very specific, so. It shouldn't be rushed as well. So I think ideally this cloth should be the same color as this cloth because they're kind of connected together. I'm gonna merge this two. Be saturated. And I think I'm gonna need some work to try and match this fabric to this fabric. So before I start to just tweak the colors, let me just uh, spend some time and tweak that. So I want to add these lines so that they actually connects with the skirt. But because the lines are still straight, I need to use the liquify tool to make sure like they are distorting around the wrinkles formed by the creases on the torso. So hopefully when I do this, everything will look like it's lining up together in 3D space. So it's a small little detail but I think it really helps a lot in terms of making everything gel together better. So you can see how like now the lines at least seem to line up with the rest of it, so that's good. And I'm thinking like a dark color for this would be quite nice. Maybe we'll add a pattern or something on it later. So I'm just using the dodge tool to just kind of start to indicate some very very loose lighting. And 
I just realized like maybe the values here are a little bit screwed up. It shouldn't be this black line there. There we go. slow you down but I think in the long term it's actually it has saved me quite a few times so I like to keep my layers clean okay so for the sleeves let's try maybe white so we're gonna take the blue channel Widen it up. I'm just gonna white is a very interesting material. Um, one of the key I found out was like you want to just reduce the contrast as much as you can. It has much less contrast than most colors because the white will reflect light amongst itself. So even parts that are shadow, uh, especially if it's fabric, it won't be that dark. So you have to just lighten everything up. It just tends to look more convincing. Lighten and less contrast. I found out that that works generally well. Happy with the color of this pencil. You know what? Let's let's try blue and see if it works. Somewhere along the lines of the color. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. So it's a like complements the color there. And same thing. We're just gonna use a dodge tool and just burn in some soft ambient shadows. So just don't overdo it. You don't want it to the point where it looks patchy. And that's kind of like a bit of a... Just kind of being very gentle and taking it slow. I think this tends to help. And keeping your exposure maybe a little bit lower than what I have now. You can even go all the way down to this low. Just gradually build up the values. So this area here is pretty much okay. The only exception is probably just it's too bright. So I'm just gonna tone it down, add a lot of soft shadowing, occlusion in between the gaps, and here as well, especially because it's quite in the shadow. It's gonna be a lot of occluding shadows here. For the socks, I'm just gonna drop the brightness, but I'm not gonna really add too much occlusion. Because uh, as I mentioned, when it comes to white material, you don't want too much contrast. It tends to look really fake when you add high contrast. 
For this part, I think it'll be cool if we colorize it to red, to something that matches up, so we get a nice tree tone system going on here. And I want this red section to be this red, so same color balance, let's just crank it up. Seems there's a tiny bit of magenta in there. And we're just gonna use the Podge tool, raise up the values a little bit, and just add that little bit of occluding shadow in between. A little bit more occluding shadow here, in between the wrinkles and the cloth, based on armor, and nice occluding shadow here. So it's gonna be a lot of occluding shadow, just particularly in this area due to how much gear is present. Just realize that this guy is floating, so we don't want that. Just using my brush, just kind of clean up it just some of these parts. And instead of using the dodge tool, I'm just gonna paint in the occluding shadows, all these small, small details in the armor. Of course, the more detail you put here, the more realistic the whole artwork is gonna become. So as you can see, like the whole piece is starting to come together a little bit better, right? Like it doesn't look so photo bash anymore. Um, nothing feels kind of floaty. So that's a good sign. That means like all of the values and the textures that we use are coming together. And the idea is like you don't really want people to be able to tell right away that you know it's made of like photos or whatever. It'll be best if just everyone can just focus on the design itself. So just adding a little bit of like white trim here. A little bit of micro detail there. The hat. Want to get all of that little shadows correct. Make sure this part is not too bright as well. And if you notice, there's a lot of like missing floating <coughs> parts here, which I need to fix manually. But once again, these small shadows, I'm just gonna paint it in because they're very fine. And I probably want like a lighter value, less warm, less contrast as well. Something that looks lighter. Here, I want to make this detail a brighter material, maybe like gold. So I'm going to change the basically to make it metallic. So I need to add the yellow, a little bit of red. And really adjust the reflectivity of it. So I really make it pop here.
and some ambient shadows to the head. That should really make the head sit. Sorry, make the hat sit on the head much better. Okay, so just a little bit of silhouette cleanup, make sure like the cloth is resting arms correctly and this like a small final tweaks to make all the silhouettes work together then now I'm gonna just add a little bit of highlight not too much just enough to suggest where the light is coming from direction wise so going layer by layer making sure each of them have sufficient light according to their position and how close they are to the light source. Adjust the values here because I think they're a little bit overexposed. Again, this is why I like that my material separated because different color will react to shadow and light differently. If I don't have the layers separated, what might happen is like everything will look too consistent, and the result might appear a little bit fake looking. So. For this part here, the samurai armor, I want the colors to be closer to the chest plate, um, which is this kind of like brownish tone. But I also want to make some small changes to the armor where this part here is just pure black, a high gloss black. So high gloss means I'm actually changing the material composition. So. I'm gonna have to actually paint like a very bright hot spot here to really make it look like it's a glossy black surface. So this is the only section that I'm actually changing the material just to add more visual interest because I think we have a lot of a lot of the same materials. So I think having this part gloss black would mix up mix it up a little bit nicer. So if you notice, um, I'm only using one brush so far, a little bit of gradient tool, nothing too fancy yet. Okay, and then for this piece here, again, it's going to be quite a bit of a masking challenge, but this upper and lower piece, I need to mask out all of these little details here. Again, it only take like 30 seconds, so you just have to do it. Don't be lazy. I'm gonna duplicate it out so we have back up. This piece here needs to be a little bit warmer, more reddish yellow, so it kind of turns out to like bronze. And as well, we're gonna just just hit it with a little bit more light as it's a reflective material so I want the brightness to be there and this piece here we're going to desaturate it darken it up and separate this top as well because these are actually a different material and I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to make this look quite glossy and shiny. So the way I'm going to do that is first lasso 
the sections out and using a dodge tool gonna hit it with a nice bright hot spot here also just gonna hit it with a little bit of a gradient airbrush so it looks more convincing so now that piece looks nicely integrated and this part here oh where is it I think it's this guy sorry I lost the layer this one here I actually want to make it like maybe reddish color well I think it's this let me see colorize yeah okay I'm gonna make this red um, again like somewhat matching the red here I'm gonna clean up each of this manually it's a little bit tedious as well, but again, very worth it. You want to make the piece convincing. And I notice it's a bit dirty there, so I'm just going to use a gradient and kind of clean up the values here. Okay, but the, the piece is coming along quite nicely. Final stuff before I fix the lighting even further. I actually did save um, some patterns and I was hoping to apply some patterns on this outfit. Um, I brought, I, I downloaded two. One is this cool wavy pattern. I'm thinking it could be applied onto the black part of this outfit. So I'm just gonna see if I can tile this. I don't know if it's a tileable texture. It doesn't look like it's tileable. But I'll just try and hide the seam the best I can. Run along the lines of that. It's gonna be quite a subtle effect, so I'm not too worried about it. But once again, uh, I like that's why I wanted to keep the layer because now I can just layer lock it. It's gonna be very easy for me to work with. So that's more like the perks of having your layers all cleaned up. Or maybe I'll just hide the seam in between the felt. Okay, so before I can do that. I need to make sure I liquefy it to match the wrinkles of the cloth. So let's go to liquefy. And our reference is layer 6. It's a little bit more visible. So I just need to kind of move the pattern around so that it generally looks like it's following the flow. of the wrinkles on my outfit. So here the cloth should be pinching a little bit. And it comes to here. And I just reduce the intensity to the top the intensity. No, it's not intensity. Pressure. Yeah, so it's a little bit less. Really push it up. Oh, that's a little bit too low. It's a subtle thing, but the eye will get tricked. So it's, it's um, pretty useful.
and the more um, the more detailed or noisy your pattern is, the more you have to work harder to make sure it, it doesn't look fake. Because definitely what we don't want is the texture looking super flat on the surface and that would just kind of defeat all of the effort that we put on just now. So you can't really see it but it's all the, the wrinkles actually being applied. And um, I'm not just going to use it like that, I'm, I'm still deciding but I think one thing that's quite fun is that we could just select all of this, the blue parts. And then I've already selected the blue parts so they're all inside here. And what I can do is maybe just make them a little bit shinier. So they, it looks like kind of some sort of like a silk pattern. And it's a very subtle touch when, you, when people see this, like they must be wondering, oh, how, how do you do that? Do you paint it in? And that's actually it's a very easy, easy step. Right? And if you want to take it a step further, we could, we could tint this gold or something like that. And just kind of make it more impressive. So I think that's, that's kind of cool. We still have other colors, so let's add on the white as well. So the white will be opposite, we darken it up, and kind of create a two tone. So it'll make like a really cool effect. Maybe not so much. It's kind of been distracting. And last bit of things I like to do is just kind of, you know, really go in and make sure all of the shadows are still being honored. So I'll just go in with a brush and just kind of clean this spots up. Add that last bit of details. CG work tends to look a little bit too clean sometimes and that's something that I think is always going to be a challenge so you always want to like mix it up a little bit texture wise. The one, I don't want so much contrast so I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. It's starting to get like it's time to get that overall 2 CG look, which I don't like. Okay, so last bit of stuff. A um, bit of dirt, a bit of noise. I'm gonna set this to soft light. Just kind of work in some discoloration in the pants. Try and adjust the shape dynamics a little bit, angle jitter, roundness jitter, size jitter, and just kind of space it out a little bit so we get more variety. Right now, just a little bit of dirt and scuffing just to make the materials just age a little bit nicer. And here yeah, we can kind of mix in just a little bit of color variety. Rain, water, mud, things like that. Of course, like it's gonna be more, um, more focus on the the feet and the shoes because they are the ones that usually you won't wash as often as the outfit. So it's a small thing. It only takes you a couple minutes to add it in, but I always believe it adds a lot of life and believability in your piece. And 
what I, I like to do as well is um, okay, hold on. Let me just finish up this third pass. Of course, I don't want to just use this. Ideally, I want to mix with a few textures, but um, I'm not going to over dirty up this guy. So I think just a little bit of this specs is fine. Uh, this is just mainly to just suggest some realism, but it's not meant to kind of make it look like battle damage or anything like that. Just notice a little bit of a missing detail here. Yep. Okay, so let's introduce a little bit more lighting. So I'm gonna use uh, just dodge tool. So metals, I can really crank it up. I'm just gonna keep this part here loose like that. But I'm gonna do my best to use the light to just at least add or suggest some detail. Be very careful that I don't overdo it because it might make the piece look very Painterly, which is not the look that we're going for. As you can see, like the white, I do think it's a little bit overwhelming. I'm just gonna knock it down a little bit. So for me, like what I think makes something look realistic is just almost actually the values are very neutral. Nothing looks overly saturated or overly bright. It just kind of like has a very subtle subtlety is kind of like one of the keys I found out that makes concepts or paintings to more of the real. And for this little bit of detail here, I'm just going to repeat that because I think that looks quite nice. Okay, let's. Um, I'm gonna just group everything, and it, it has some suggestion of lighting, but I want it to be a little bit more uh, obvious. So let's just put this side by side so that we have a reference point. But we're reaching the end, by the way, so uh, we're getting close. Beyond this is all going to be just lighting and final presentation. So what I'm going to do here is just using my lasso tool. I'm just going to mask the areas that I think would have a drop shadow. So definitely this shoulder armor is going to cause some kind of like very prominent drop shadow. His neck is actually already in shadow so that's fine but I do want like a drop shadow from his head. So I'm going to do this carefully so that it doesn't look too fake but essentially I'm trying to read the surface and make sure like the the drop shadow is somewhat accurate. The one here gonna be a drop shadow on his arm from his arm. And maybe on the feet from his very big pants. Uh, 
castles. And we'll take it step by step. So I will I'm gonna do just maybe more big obvious shadows first before I start to tackle the more softer secondary shadows. So I'm gonna press Shift F6 to feather selection. I think it will try if 10 pixels is too much. So that means maybe just three will do. And essentially what I'm gonna do is just darken up this area a little bit slowly. First like that. And then next, using a burn tool, just start to darken up the balance here. So you want to do this just very carefully, so that we don't end up, you know, making it too contrast and end up looking black. So like. This is the reason why I kind of just merged everything in the end, so it's easier for me to handle. If I had all the layers you want, it's going to be very annoying in this part. So now we can go into like maybe a little bit more secondary shadows. These ones are going to be more delicate. I'm going to do some with the face. A little bit of car shadow from the nose, from the mouth, and the chin. So this, ideally, is supposed to make everything just look a little bit more three-dimensional. So shift F6 again. Maybe this time a little bit more softer. And I'm just gonna just increase the contrast, darken this up a little bit. Now with skin, because skin is actually quite translucent, so the intensity of the shadows won't be that in, won't be that high. And in fact like sometimes because of like the the, the softness and the translucency of our skin and the yeah, she will also be tinting some color purples and reds and that will just make the overall just skin just look a little bit more fresh so both are fine I would just say like this maybe is a bit flat this one has a little bit more lighting information so depending on like what outcome you want to go for I think both are, are usable outcomes I'm just gonna clean this up so that it just looks a little bit more presentable. And just start to make his skin just a little bit healthier, a little bit more wet. So just be very careful at this point because it's kind of quite easy to overdo this stage. Um, and there is a risk of everything becoming too painterly in the end as well, which is not something that we want. Eyes are the window to the soul. Just want to make sure that I put enough care into it, just get it nicely defined. There you go. And I mean, the skin is, is all fine and dandy, but it is a little bit. Um, plasticky 
a little bit plasticky to my liking. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of freckles. Well, not freckles, but just defects in the skin. Just to make it look like less perfect. It's a little bit too perfect in my opinion. I mean, our base is a supermodel, but yeah, so we want to just kind of bring it, gra bring it down to reality a little bit. So, I don't want the reflections to be all like just kind of perfect airbrushes, so I'm going to use this little bit of a a little noisy brush here, a speckle brush, kind of like diffuse the reflections a little bit. And just just the values here because for some reason it just looks too dark for me. I'm gonna just add another layer to it and raise it up. And I find it weird that so much neck is being revealed. Kind of noodling away, um, kind of refine all of this edges here, and this will be like kind of the last and the longest stage. This is like the remaining five percent, I would say, of work to clean everything up, add any missing details, blend the all of the photo textures together, add like missing micro details that I think would maybe add more storytelling. So also like you know to fix ugly ugly edges like this. So I, I like this brush because it kind of suggests like a slightly frayed edge which gives it a nice kind of hand painted look or something with a little bit more texture. Rather than too hard of like a CG cut. I also would use like the smudge tool. And just kind of tone down some of these like brush strokes because some of them are a little bit too obvious for my liking.
Okay, so using the sponge tool, I'm just gonna tone down some of the saturation here and there's many ways you can do it. Uh, I like the sponge tool because it's like it's a brush that you can saturate saturate sections and once again like for me realism is about subtlety so I'm just gonna tone down like the redness of the face, kinda keep it more realistic. Tone down some of the blues here. And maybe what we can do is just kind of crank up some of the values, some of the hues on this brighter parts. Make this just a little bit more vibrant. So at least it doesn't look too flat. There is enough saturation variety in the whole piece. So I'm trying to think about how like, you know, when pants, the more you use them and wash them, those parts will start to get more faded compared to portions like this fabric here and that should remain quite nice and bright because this is like maybe a more expensive piece of fabric. Same with the metals, uh, you want to avoid everything to be too consistently bright or saturated. Okay, so let's start to go into presentation. First off, um, let's create a light source. This is the light source for hitting the ground. So imagine there's like a spotlight there. So we're just reinforcing the light setup they already have. Um, here's how I do cast shadows, especially for a top-down shadow like this, this is easy. I just uh, lasso out like an imaginary top view of the character. So top view meaning that you're looking at the character right from the top. Uh, try to figure out where his arms are. So his arms is kind of stretched out here. And then you have the stick. The stop. Um, and then you have his big puffy pants. A little bit of his feet sticking out. So generally it's gonna look like that. And you can sketch it out as well if you're not comfortable doing it with the lasso. But once we have the top view, then I just have to map it on the ground. Same angle, same perspective as ground and for the most part it should be much easier to do it this way of course like it requires a little bit of tweaking that's a given but it's a very good base um, and especially if you're doing something like a vehicle or a robot or something that has a very complex geometric form, this is even better. Character is not so much of a big problem, I suppose, for car shadows. It's quite straightforward in general. But one thing is I just really want to make sure I get like all these details, like with the rings and everything. Just loosely, and I think it really adds to the realism of it. OK, 
Okay, so give or take, I I would imagine this is the general look of it. Alright, so just keep checking and make sure that it kind of feels right. Alright, so I think that, that kind of feels right shape wise. But we know that shadows aren't the shadows aren't gonna be this intense. Because if this the shadow is this dark, you need like a super heavy spotlight. Um, so we're gonna just lighten it and I already set it to multiply, so when you lighten it, it's gonna just softly touch the ground. And I'm gonna add a motion blur. The direction of the motion blur is depending, so the angle here is based on the angle of the feet. Right, so that's how you decide on what the angle is. And you can use reference or photography as well to kind of help you get like a precise outcome, but generally it's like that. And what I like to do is then start to burn in the occlusion shadows on the feet to the ground. And I find that when I do this, the shadows become way more realistic. <laughs> Way more convincing. And also, depending on the distance of the shadow with the ground, so some shadows will be softer, some shadows will be darker and harder. around with this a little bit more ultimately it's just kind of like making sure the feeling is right I think that's the most important one because you can tell right away when the shadow is off uh, there's there's something very unsettling about it where it feels like your character you don't want it to look like a puddle of water that's for sure it, it should just look natural And so because our lighting is quite soft and even, so our shadow is actually going to be pretty soft as well. It looks like an Asian Keanu Reeves, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it does, right? Yeah. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. That was not part of the plan, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, and the expression, that kind of handsome blank expression. So last bit of touch up is just, uh, you know, I'm just going around the piece, seeing where I can just add a little bit more vivid shadows, you know, just to make it a little bit more three dimensional. Shadow and light by far are one of like the best things to make something look like it has good form. That's usually something that I found uh, is the culprit, you know, that makes your work look flat or unconvincing is the light and shadow. If you can master light and shadow, you can literally paint almost anything. At that point, it's not so much about your design sense or your reference, it's just how, how you can control light.
So there are some obvious discrepancies with the design compared to the sketch now looking at it. But, you know, that's where I will kind of go one more pass and maybe add all these missing things down the road. I think uh, for the purpose of just explaining how the polo bash, how to paint with textures, and I think this is pretty good enough. So if, if you notice, like the, the brush work is actually very, very minimal. Uh, there's almost, I think I only use two to three custom brushes, but it was just more of a bonus to add a bit of texture. All of the bulk work was created with the focal elements. And for like, I think that the official clock is about two hours and a half, two and a half hours. But for this level of finish, so you imagine if you, you have uh, eight hours of a working day, you can average about two of this a day um, with research, right? And then maybe you spend more time on developing the ideas. So if you want to work for like film or games and there's a higher turnaround, showing this, I mean, within like a few hours is really good. And I could actually make the finishing more rough and maybe do three or four per day, which is my normal output. So I'll do like something like this for four options a day, but just a little bit less finishing um, so that like you can see everything in color right away. But I would say this is like maybe midway, like about 60% finish. And then, uh, then the final 40% will be just adding all the missing stuff, the extra details and things like that. 